We are at the Global Will Economic Forum and uh, we are delighted and privileged to have a person from very far away. She's come all the way from South Africa. Her name is Rapilang Rabana and she runs a, she's the CEO of a company called Rekindle Learning. And uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating idea and we're sitting here talking about how she actually rekindles learning. How do you rekindle learning? Hi, thanks so much for having me. Pleasure. You know, I've, I've been a technology entrepreneur for 10 years now, so I always look at different ways we can approach challenging situations in, in our society. And I think around learning and education, there's a lot of challenges. Yeah. Even though there's a lot of hype around ed tech and e-learning and things, you'll find that I think we're still in the first generation of it. And by first generation, I don't know if you remember when websites first came out back in the 90s, companies would put that same print brochures online. It was really terrible websites but we didn't reinterpret the medium to really use it and now we're finally getting there so i think with e-learning we're kind of still in that space we're putting the powerpoint presentations and the pdf files that we used to have in print on a shared drive online and we're calling it e-learning and we haven't really understood the medium or fundamentally changed how that works so with rekindle learning we're really looking at how can we embed smart learning methodologies behind the actual learning so that we improve the efficiency of that knowledge transfer and that learning and there's a range of techniques that we use for that um concepts around micro learning and personalized learning where you learn in small bite-sized chunks and you adapt to how you're performing so that you help focus on the your weak areas so that you learn faster and get to um, the level of performance required a lot quicker and that can be applied whether you're a sales rep in a mobile operator whether you're an auditor in a compliance environment um, or whether you're at university and trying to master the new terms of economics and accounting. So it's really, really quite broad. Yeah. The, the Global uh, Will Forum here uh, mm. is talking about ideas which you're coming up with, but also about mm. business mm. and about economics and about yes. making things work. Sure. So how does your business model work? Mm -mm. So our business model really adapts the sort of cool way of doing things around cloud-based services okay. or SaaS kind of model. So with an, with an organization or company, they will pay for employee per mm. month on the system. Okay. So it's an annuity sustainable model yep. that allows us to really grow and be able to plow back um, into R&D. Um, with our university products, you need to be a little bit more aware or sort of um, sensitive to the cost barriers um, in academic learning environments. So there will typically be a once a year sort of fee for a student mm -hmm. that is substantially reduced compared to what one would get into a corporate environment. But the idea again is that every year there's a new intake of first year students and we make sure we build annuity income streams into all our products. And it's not just a, a once off thing. How do you make a difference mm. uh, in your life and the lives of other people? And mm. uh, Because our motto is to be mad. Mad is make a difference. So yeah. how do you make a difference and how do you go mad? I think that madness is really built into every part of my life already by virtue of the kind of business I do where I believe it, it, it will be a sustainable um, and, and financially successful business, but also a business that moves society forward. And that's a big part of um, how a great deal of how I spend my time. The other ways I would say is that I spend a lot of time talking and a lot of speaking engagements and reach a few hundred people each year mm -hmm. on my journey so that other young women in particular are empowered to see how this kind of journey can evolve and it's not something that's foreign to them and outside of them and beyond that reach and i hope i can provide that kind of um accessibility to them that it's possible for them as well you were on the game changer panel uh, in this and, forum yeah, yes, and was. how did you enjoy that what are your thoughts sure, it, was a, it was an incredible group of women there very 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 well accomplished and i love being in these kind of situations because it reminds you just how the strength of, I think, that women power is growing and growing and to see them express their um, ambitions and dreams in all these different areas, it's, it's, it's comforting that you're not just um, a little island on your own and it's coming together across the whole world. Dubai plays uh, very mm. much the role of a bridgehead between mm. uh, places like India and China going into Africa. Mm. Um, so Dubai yes, actually is yes. a very central uh, mm. position mm. in mm. terms mm. of that mm. experience. And, uh, and this corridor is, is very interesting, how we can cross-fertilize. Yes, yes, what are yes. your thoughts as part of this forum mm. uh, in terms of cross-fertilization with a place like Dubai? What's interesting for me is that I've been coming to Dubai now for maybe five or six years. My older brother worked here for a number of years. And the critical cross-fertilization for me that can happen is that we can come as Africans to places like Dubai and recognize that 
a leader was in a position to have a vision and they dared to make all of this a reality where it was literally dust 30, 40 years before. And what can we do now as leaders, knowing that it really takes that capacity to have that vision and take back to our own countries? And what can you learn from them, having had such a dramatic growth spurt in that What did you learn? What did you from learn? That? What, I, what, what, what reinforced for me quite clearly was that truly nothing is fixed and permanent. Mm -hmm. If you want to shift that um, needle forward, it can take focused effort and attention and you can shift things. It's very hard to look at countries like, I mean, Europe and US that have done this a hundred years mm -hmm. before and imagine it can happen now. But when you look at a change that's happened in less than 30 years, mm -hmm. it, it makes it a lot clearer that it can happen. This is a, a the Will Forum is a wonderful platform mm -hmm. and there are about 90 speakers and about 500 delegates. Uh, some amazing stories and some amazing inspirational people like you yeah. mentioned. What is your final message for them to take away um, and to deliver impact tomorrow morning? To deliver Just impact tomorrow morning. One little thing that they can do for tomorrow morning. <laughs> A bit my, of advice. My, my, favorite, my favorite comment really and, and quote um, is something that, that Steve Jobs says. He said that um, in one of his less popular interviews, everything around you that you call life was made up by someone no smarter than you and you can influence it and you can change it. So my real message is that we have to come out of this shell where you think um, life continues to happen to you and you have to kind of wait for better things to happen mm -hmm. and realize that we are really creating the life that we want and it's not given to us and it's not to someone better than us to do for us. We are in the position to actually influence and contribute. What a wonderful message. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You.